All right, guys, like I said, we're going to dive right into this thing. No time to mess around. Let's get going. But this is pretty much where I like to start. Everything laid out, you know, just kind of put all your bags around you so you can reach, grab stuff, keep stuff organized. I like to keep the box the car come in off to the side. I throw all the trash into that. I don't, you know, that way if you clip a part off and you miss one, if you throw it in a trash can, there's a good chance you might throw it away or something like that. I don't know, or get lost. So all my bags, everything I'm going to throw away goes into the original box. And once the car is all together, and I'm sure I have everything and everything's good, then I'll throw the, the whole thing away. So, <laughs> but all right. Like I said, we're diving right in. Let's get going. Time lapse starts now. <laughs> Real quick, I just want to take a quick moment and uh, like I said, when you when all this stuff's made, like your shocks and all that stuff, it's going to have like a little bit of dirt and debris and stuff like that in it and like crut, like you know, just stuff all around it. Like if you, I can't, I know it's not going to focus, but it's like a bunch of white stuff inside here. I will clean it up a little bit, you know, to take a microfiber and kind of wipe it off and stuff like that. I don't go too crazy because, you know, the car is going to kind of break in as you run it for the first couple of times. So I'll usually run my kit... You know, I'll get, I don't know, 30 minutes of runtime on it, I guess, um, somewhere around there. And then I'll stop running it, check, and, you know, go through, check everything, and I'll change all the fluids and stuff like that, and just basically let that stuff work its way out. Because this takes a long time, and you'll sit there and scrub and pick and pick, trying to get it perfectly clean. So I just kind of basically just wipe it clean a little bit and let it ride. Because you're going to change your fluids a lot anyway, or you should. But anyway, that's just my opinion. But we're gonna get back at it and get these things together. Alright guys, once you got your diff, um, you're not going to be able to see this, but once you get, you can kind of see it, it's got that nice little glaze across the top, it's all scraped down, and turn music down, <laughs> but it's all cleaned off, I take a Q-tip and just stick it right down in the center where the, uh, not like way down in there, where the uh, out drive would go, just to scoop out enough to make room for the out drive, that way it just doesn't like mush fluid everywhere. So that right there won't let no, you know, it's not really putting any air or anything in it, but it still helps with, you know, or taking a lot of material out of here anyway. It just helps, you know, it not make such a mess. But anyway, and I always try to line your pin up a little bit to uh, basically, you know, if you got it right in between where the gear or the uh, screws go, like I usually try to line it up to where the screws are and line the gear up to where it'll basically just, you know, plop down on there. But to make your life a little bit easier. So line it up, just kind of get a good idea and then just uh, send her on home. And once you get your diff all assembled, you want to check it just to make sure everything's smooth and it's working pretty good. You know, feels pretty good to me. You can wipe off all the extra grease and stuff and it should look something like that. And man, I really need a new camera. But you get the idea. So, two more to go.
right guys, that's pretty much it. The kit went together really good. Uh, I don't have anything to report uh, bad. Um, I built it pretty much the same way I built all my cars. Uh, just the, the factory, the steel screws in the bottom and titanium screws everywhere else. Um, not really doing that for any particular reason, just for like the bling factor, I think it looks really good. Um, like I said, use the, the little aluminum wing brace, whatever you want to call that thing, I keep forgetting. Uh, this conversion kit, like I said, is, of course it's not meant for the newer uh, MP10 platforms, but it worked very well. I had a, a, had a suspicion that it would, but actually when I started posting stuff on social media about doing this conversion kit, um, someone reached out to me with like proof that it would work. So that's awesome. There's like one or two little things that I had to modify to kind of get it to work. Um, but I'll make a separate video breaking down the conversion kit and everything. Um, but anyway, yeah, it went together really good. I've already got my electronics ordered. Um, so the next video you see, we'll actually get everything hooked up and get this thing on the road and actually run it for a little bit. So it's working out pretty good. I'm pumped on it. And I hope you guys will stick around and follow this because uh, it should get kind of interesting. This thing looks sick, and uh, I can't wait to actually get some track time with it. So, sweet. All right, guys. I want to appreciate you for watching, and like I said, uh, make sure you subscribe and stick around because we'll be doing a lot of RC car stuff, and uh, I can't wait. So, yeah. See you in the next one, guys.